Well, whew, it's only eleven twenty. We, we we get the we get the wrap up the party a little early tonight. Instead of two a.m., it'll be about close to midnight. We get to wrap things up. Um, the Oregon Arizona game just went final. I'll just tell you that you know. I mean, Bo Nix led the way. This Ducks team ran for seven touchdowns on the Wildcats and whip them pretty badly. But that's neither here nor there, you know. Well, I mean, what a day of struggling for some of the top teams in the country. What a day of struggling. And also, let's just get the elephant out the way real quick. I'm so happy that Texas shut out Oklahoma. I am beyond pleased. And because of today's results, I do think Texas will be back in the top 25, along with a couple other teams. Or a couple, uh, I think there may be some other teams that are sneaking into the top 25 real soon. So we'll see who gets in on Sunday at like 1 o'clock Central Time. But let's go back up a little bit, you know. You know, uh, we need to go through the noon games because Arkansas Mississippi State was not that great for Arkansas. Like Arkansas has fallen off a cliff. That defense got picked apart by Will Rogers. He nearly threw for 400 yards. Defense for the Bulldogs forced two turnovers. It was just too late. It's too little, too late for Arkansas, the Mississippi State. They look, they look real. Again, the loss to LSU is kind of just kind of lingering there, but they look, they look like a team that can play. Michigan, I'm not sold on Michigan. I think I've said this before. I'm not sold on Michigan at all. They struggled throughout this game until the fourth quarter. Yeah, Blake Horn got a hundred yards. Get yeah, JJ McCarthy got three hundred yards passing, but again. And yeah, the defense sacked uh, Indiana's quarterback Bazelak seven times, but come on. Come on. Really? You expect me to believe that this Michigan team is going to stay unbeaten all the way until the Ohio State game? I hope not. I really hope they don't because this, this Michigan team has been sitting here in the 11 a.m. window on Fox for three straight weeks struggling for most of the game all three of these games Maryland, Iowa, and now Indiana struggling like the offense has to get it into full gear Harbaugh has to get them in the full gear now like this is ridiculous they had Tennessee LSU which started off bad for the Tigers as they fumbled the opening kickoff and then you got Hendon Hooker and Jabari Small just picking the Tigers apart like they were, you know, like, like, like they were that, you know, nice, juicy, delicious, you know, and I'm thinking of hogs, like they were like this, this big hog, you know, like you cook a hog, pick him apart, and you got all the, you got all the meat up in there, and y'all ready to go to be eaten, and they just, Tennessee just picked them apart, and now Tennessee's in a good position next, for next week, against Bama, oh boy. We'll talk about Bama later, but TCU Kansas game day came on over, and this game did not disappoint easily the game of the day. Sad that things kind of got decided by ref ball towards the end, but unfortunately for Kansas, Jalen Daniels got injured. Jason Bean came in, and he showed out. I mean, Kansas was struggling a little bit early on in this game, and yet. The wide receivers for the Jayhawks were just catching everything under the sun. But despite all that, Max Duggan had a man by the name of Quentin Johnston who put up 200 plus yards on eight catches, like 219 yards on eight catches on these Jayhawks. And again, TCU remains undefeated. And Kansas has lost the game. And I, uh, and I think next week, Kansas, uh, hey, 
You got Oklahoma next week. You should be in a good spot. But blow them out. Please do that. For me. In the afternoon, uh, you know, the Bearcats, they struggled against um, USF. They had Charles McClellan run all over the Bulls instead because, again, the Bearcat QBs just struggled. Like, they were throwing picks left and right, and USF was able to stay in this game. They even led at one point. Like, this is not ideal, Cincy. Not ideal if you want to get back to... Um, a big time bowl game, you know, later down the line. Auburn, Georgia, I, I, sh I should have known. I should have known something was going to happen, but I didn't think the Dogs' defense would look like that team again from early in the season. They look like they look like the Georgia from earlier in the season that beat up on Oregon again. They look like that again. Dijon Edwards was the guy, really. As the dogs just ran for six touchdowns this game, they didn't. They didn't have Stetson Bennett do too too much through the air. They ran the ball and dominated. That is Georgia football right there, dominating. That is that is that is the good stuff right there. Utah UCLA easily one of the games of the day. You knew somebody was going to lose this game because somebody was because both these teams were ranked. And unfortunately for Utah. Dorian Thompson Robinson, who had 300 plus yards by himself, most of them through the air, five touchdowns. Zach Charbonnet had 198 yards running and a touchdown. And they, the, both of those guys, shine as the Bruins offense rumbles all over the Utes. Now the score is a little closer because, for whatever reason, UCLA decided to throw the ball with like two or three minutes left to go. DTR got. You know, picked off and that got took it back for a pick six. But in any case, Cam Rising and and the Utes just they had they 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 had the yards. There were some fumbles in this game too. But ultimately, the Utes defense was the deciding factor here as they just got steamrolled by the Bruins and that used to LA sit pretty. They're they're looking at, they're looking at themselves. They're flexing. And I mean, now's a good time to be flexing. Now's a good time to be flexing. Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, tough game for the Cowboys. Spencer Sanders, I, 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 the jury's still out on him. Like he's he's been kind of inconsistent, but he had three touchdowns. And also, you know, despite the fact that you know Texas Tech was up thirty-one to twenty-three. With Bear Morton, you know, being in, yeah, he came in uh, for Donovan Smith, the third stringer. You know, defense for the Cowboys stepped up, and the Pokes were able to just score the last 18 points of this game. Take it away from Texas Tech. Take the victory away from them, because again, Tech was up 31-23 at one point, and Oklahoma State stays unbeaten. So now it sets up a showdown between Oklahoma State and TCU next Saturday. It's going to be a good one. Anyway, um, the guy who's probably going to win the Heisman this year, C.J. Stroud, just picked apart Michigan State like it was nobody's business. Six touchdowns. Buckeyes defense smothering Michigan State. And yeah, you know, guys for Ohio State have been out. Yeah, some people are going to say, oh, well, Ohio State hasn't played anybody you know, but that's neither here nor there. This is honestly the number one team in the country. I don't even know why we're. I don't even know why we're at this point now. Uh, I think, in my personal opinion, this is the number one team in the country again. Like you got to flip flop these three each and every other week. Like Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama. You got to flip flop them every other week. And now this week, I feel like Ohio State should be number one. That's just how I feel, and that's how a lot of people feel too. Like, again, C.J. Stroud will win the Heisman. He will win the Heisman this year regardless of what happens. I, that's, just, that's just me. Arizona State beat Washington. Zazabi and Holiday. The Sun Devils. They did it. They beat Washington. And I don't know what it is about going to Arizona and losing. But that's just what happens. 
it, it it's it, it was it was rough for Michael Penix and the company, you know, of the Huskies. Is I mean, he got banged up towards the end. Did throw for a touchdown. He threw for like 300 plus yards, but he did throw for a touchdown. Washington had the run for touchdowns in this game. That's just not gonna cut it, especially when your defense gets gashed yet again. And as quickly as Washington had it. You know, they had all the momentum and all the praise. They lost it. Sad. And Ole Miss Vanderbilt. Vandy had the lead. Vandy was up 20 to 10 at one point. But as soon as Ole Miss saw that, they were like, all right. Jackson Dart and company was like, all right. Let's blow them out. And that's exactly what they did. They blew out the doors in the second half. And the Rebels, they stay unbeaten so good on Ole Miss they should be good to go for next week because they got Auburn but we know Auburn's pretty bad so you know it is what it is there and then in the evening while I was watching Extreme Rules you know very good pay-per-view by the way Um, we'll talk a little bit more about WWE later but a lot of games were packed into the evening window, but I mostly focused on, you know, the games that were on, you know, the networks, you know, the actual network television over the air. Uh, so Washington State USC was one of the games I highlighted, and although Camp Ward did his best, Wazoo just couldn't stop Travis Dye on defense, and the Caleb to Mario Williams connection had two touchdowns as well, and unfortunately for Wazoo, they lose yet again in a game where, again, USC struggled a little bit in this game. Because, I mean, Caleb Williams, he was barely over 50% completions. Like, that's not great. And yet, USC still took it. BYU is probably going to be sitting, you know, waiting for an Independence Bowl invite again. They should have won this game. They should have, but... Fortunately, they did not show up, and this was a concern that I had. And the Fighting Irish defense, they are, they again, this is the, that Fighting Irish defense is real. Like, despite the fact that the offense, you know, sometimes was not always there, they they shined. Like, the Cougars had less than a hundred yards total at one point. You know, Droop I to Michael Mayer, that was a nice connection. Two of the three touchdowns from Bine were to him. And again, Notre Dame, you know, despite the fact that they have two losses, you know, two losses that, you know, one of them, you, you, you know, you kind of can't really say much about because, again, it was Ohio State, but the other one was just bad Notre Dame football. I mean, that, this is huge for Notre Dame. Good momentum, shifter form. Maybe they can find something that can get them back in good spirits, you know, later down the line. But for BYU, this is absolutely disappointing. You get smacked around by Oregon. You lose to Notre Dame. You and Arkansas just get the play in a game that does not mean anything next week. So kudos to both of y'all. And speaking of a team that gets to play in a meaningless game, you know, down the line, Kentucky. Will Levis didn't even play this game. And the Cox, led by Spencer Rattler, Marshawn Lloyd, on offense. And the defense only allowed, you know, what, like three or four third downs to be converted. It was 25%. They allowed 25% conversions on third down. And, you know, the Wildcats lose their second straight game. They're going to... They're going to tumble a little bit. They might tumble out of the rankings altogether, in my personal opinion. And Kentucky, you know, had the momentum, and yet they lost it, too, in a matter of weeks. Same thing that happened to Washington happened to them. Just not a good look for them. And then Clemson, Boston College, I don't know why. Clemson was only, you know, in a 3-3 game at first, but then DJ Uyla said, I... I got this. Throws three touchdowns. Boston College's offense is just absolutely horrible. So they didn't, didn't, like, BC didn't even try. Like, 
they have three points, and it was deadlocked at three. And then after that, Clutz had scored 28 straight and put it away. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy for Clemson. Next week should be a little bit more difficult for them, though. But again, we'll talk about them in a moment. We'll talk about the team that they'll be facing next week in a moment. As Kansas State and Iowa State were in a defensive slugfest, a true Big 12 defensive slugfest as, you know, the way the Big 12 has been the last couple of years, it's been about defense. And 10-9, to like, it was tough. Tough game, but the Wildcats survived. Adrian Martinez had the only touchdown pass, the only touchdown in the game. That was the first quarter. And over 300 yards, That's that was just enough to keep the Cyclones at bay. And then Wake Forest, you know, balanced attack by the Demon Deacons, four touchdowns on the ground, two through the air. You know, it wasn't just Sam Hartman throwing the ball. It wasn't, you know, both of Wake Forest's quarterbacks were throwing the ball. And, you know, again, Deeks took care of business because Army's not that good this year, unfortunately. And their defense is pretty bad. Florida State, NC State. Again, this was a game I highlighted. Potentially a, um, you know, a game of the week type deal right here. You know, Jordan Travis had nearly 300 yards by himself. And, you know, Florida State looking like they were going to blow NC State out because they were up 17-3 to at halftime. They were up 17-3, to but then the second half came. Devin Leary, he helped. He helped out. Got injured. Jack Chambers had to step in. And the Knowles did absolutely nothing in the second half. They went scoreless. Jordan Travis had two picks. The last one being one of the worst throws I've ever seen in my entire life because it should not have even been thrown. Florida State should have won this game, by the way. You know, Florida State had the lead throughout the entire rest of the game until NC State finally got a late field goal. Florida State drives down, doesn't run the ball when they need to, you know, with like 30 seconds left to go. And then... George Travis throws up one of the dumbest throws I've ever seen in my life. And Florida State loses. Just how, 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 do you, how do you mess this up? How do you mess this up? My goodness. Mike Norvell is not a good coach. And you're like, man. Like, why? Speaking of not good coaches, <laughs> college coaches, man. Jimbo Fisher. And those A&M Aggies, oh boy, oh boy. How do you mess this up? Alabama turned it over four times. Jalen Milrow had like 20 passes total in this game. Alabama missed two field goals. And you throw a pass, you call a play. That's a pass that doesn't reach the end zone with three seconds, less than three seconds left to go to end the game. And you get picked off. Well, actually, no, no, that, that pick didn't count. But the last play of the game didn't count. You know, for almost because it was uh, like a penalty. But then the actual last play, you know, was a terrible play that didn't make it into the end zone. I am beyond livid at A&M right now. I am beyond livid at Jimbo Fisher right now. Because Alabama, as we know, should have multiple losses at this point. But, you know, Texas, you know, didn't have Queen Edwards. But uh, that's neither here nor there. It's neither here nor there. Um, uh, no, 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 you didn't hear me say that. But... A&M, you had the opportunities. You had your quarterback play. You had Haynes King play. You had, all, you had everything. Like, you had the four turnovers. You had the misfield. I, I just don't. I just don't get it. I don't get it, man. And Alabama should be number one anyway. Drop them to number three, please. 
dropped them to number three. Like I said, the same thing about Georgia, you know, last week against Missouri. Same thing applies here. Drop Alabama to number three and just be done with it. Because this was a pathetic performance by the Crimson Tide. And next week, this ain't no pillow fight with A&M. You're going up against Tennessee. And Tennessee has said, oh, they, oh, they want the smoke this time. But in any case, the incompetence by top 10 teams is enough for me tonight. And getting this video out before midnight is also enough for me tonight. So hopefully I can do that. And hopefully I see you all on Monday night when I get back from work. And when I get back and watch, you know, the Raiders and the Chiefs. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed college football tonight. And hopefully we get another couple weeks like this where, you know, the, um, the games end way before midnight. So I can get the recaps out before then. See you, everybody. And I hope uh, you use like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And do all the good stuff you need to do to keep the train rolling. We need to get to 200 before the end of the year, by the way.